welcome back to It's an Inside Job podcast. I'm your host, Jason Lim. Now, this podcast is dedicated to helping you to help yourself and others to become more mentally and emotionally resilient so you can be better at bouncing back from life's inevitable setbacks. Now, on It's an Inside Job, we decode the science and stories of resilience into practical advice, skills, and strategies that you can use to impact your life and those around you. Now, with that said, let's slip into the stream. Well, welcome back to a new episode and a fresh new week. Thanks for allowing me to be part of your walk, whether it's walking the dog or going for a walk, a run, a bike ride, your commute to work, or just doing the chores. I appreciate being able to spend some time with you. This week, as we do every week, I want to share stories and experiences of people's resilience. And I have a fellow Canadian with me this week. Today, I am thrilled to have Shelly Lynn Hughes, the founder and CEO of Pursuit 365 and Fresh Magazine. You know, Shelly is a dynamic business owner, public speaker, best-selling author, and skincare label developer with a passion for turning ideas into reality. Shelly has helped build successful brands and communities in the health and beauty industry. In this episode, Shelly shares her journey as an entrepreneur and how she came up with the idea of Pursuit 365, a book with 365 authors sharing their stories of perseverance and inspiration. She also discusses how this book has evolved into a community of like-minded individuals who support and uplift one another. Shelly emphasizes the importance of never giving up and how rising from challenging situations can lead to unexpected opportunities. She also shares her insights on the power of having a mentor business coach and how they have inspired her to achieve her goals. So hold on to your headphones and get ready to be inspired by the entrepreneurial journey of Shelly Lynn Hughes. So without further ado, let's slip into the stream and meet Shelly. Well, Shelly, welcome very much to It's an Inside Job podcast. I really appreciate your time and that you could show up considering you're in BC and British Columbia, for those who don't know BC, and I am in Oslo. So there's quite the time difference. I'm glad we could make this work. I was wondering if we could begin the conversation by you introducing who you are and what you do. Wonderful. Well, first of all, Jason, I'd like to say thank you very much for inviting me on your show. Um, it's an honor to be here and it's been an honor to actually get to know you. And even though you're on the other side of the world, I feel like I've got a friend on the other side. So thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I, uh, you know, I live in Canada. I'm a Canadian uh, mother of two children. I've got a seven-year-old and a 16-year-old, although they are both, uh, their, their birthdays are both on May 28th. So they're, they will be turning eight and uh, 17 in the next little while and, you know, in a few weeks. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for um, well over 20 years now. Uh, and, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs mm -hmm. with that. Uh, but it's also been the journey has been extremely rewarding for me. Uh, yeah, so that that's just a bit about me. I love to travel. I love animals, mm. love to exercise, stay healthy. And um, yeah, that's it. Well, as you know, this this podcast focuses on sharing stories and ex uh, sharing stories and experiences and skills to explore the idea of resilience. And someone such as yourself, who's an entrepreneur, who's who's launched a number of businesses and has a community around her, that is not always an easy thing. When people see success, they think, oh, she just had it lucky or he had it lucky. You know, you told me some of the story and it had nothing to do with, I guess, a little luck, like in anything. But a lot mm -hmm. of it had to do with a lot of blood, sweat and tears, I, 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 as I'd characterize it as. I was wondering, Absolutely. maybe you could start with where did your career begin? I mean, because obviously you run Fresh Magazine in Canada, which is quite a popular magazine, and you've written several books based on the Pursuit 365. And I'd like to explore that and the connection. Where would you like to begin the conversation here? Well, I'll go back. I, I heard a, I heard a, a, a gentleman, an entrepreneur, a very successful um, man named Brian Jessel, in Vancouver here, he owns, you know, multiple BMW dealerships. So he's, he's very successful here in, in my neighborhood. And him and I had a quick conversation one day about 
his success. I love, like you, I love to learn about other people's successes, how they got there. And we actually, he used the word, we, we talked about luck. And he said, you know, Shelly, I'm going to tell you, he says, 50% of my success was the hard work, determination, you know, to build this mm. company. And he says 50% of that was actually luck, you know, he mm. at being at the right place at the right time. So I would like what you were just saying, you know, I would say, I have a lot of determination, um, but some of it's been luck too, just getting to know the right people, or maybe I'm just open-minded to meet the right people and open-minded for, you know, falling down and getting back up again. It's okay to fall down. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd say I'd kind of agree with Brian. It's 50% luck, 50% of hard work. Um, where I started, uh, I started, you know, I, I went, to, I went to college, didn't stick with it. I actually went to, I went to college for criminology I wanted to be, you know, my younger years, I wanted to go into law. Uh, didn't quite know what I wanted to do, but I didn't mm -hmm. stick to that for very long. I ended up going into work in a nightclub and uh, was making a lot of money, $500 to $1,000 a night. And that was really hard to leave, but I was still only 19, 20, 21 years old. Uh, I then ended up uh, going and working in a grocery store. And, you know, it was, it was hard work, but it was, you know, it was, there was limitations on how far I could go with that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always, the back of my head, I always thought, you know, and I'm not there yet, but I always, I, I want my name on the outside of a building, not on my shirt. Mm -hmm. And, and I know that sounds, it was just, I, I just had this thing inside of me that was just so, um, determined. And I've learned that my determination now over the years mm -hmm. was to help others and in helping others I've helped myself so and so so what year are we looking here when when you when you sort of decided to go from sort of name on the shirt to name on the side of a building uh we're talking 25 years ago so 25 years ago uh, was when it all sort of started. You know, I was working there. I was working at the grocery store. Mm. Um, I ended up starting a, a personal training company because I was in the fitness industry as well. Two jobs, you know, working here, working there. And then I became a fitness competitor. And with that, that's where a lot of the, uh, with my, uh, an ex-partner of mine, mm. um, we noticed that in Canada, that's how I got into the, the publishing industry, is that there was really only one, Canadian health magazine and it was a free one that was in you know all of the health food stores across Canada it's still alive today it's it's doing great but we noticed the one component that was not in the magazine so then you know looking at what we could do differently we wanted to educate we wanted to help people mm -hmm. but we noticed at the time 24 25 years ago or whatever it was 27 years ago now that this certain publication at the time did not have any fitness in it. So it was a health magazine with a zero fitness component, mm. um, had a lot of organic foods, had a lot of, uh, you know, supplements or, you know, some supplements, a lot of recipes, but we knew uh, that a big component being from the health industry or at least personal training and fitness, fitness training, that, that exercise is such a huge com component of health. And back then it just, it just wasn't in there. So we thought, well, what can we do differently? How can we service Canadians? And, and let them know that this is such a huge thing. So that's how we, we separated ourselves from, you know, one of the top magazines. And then we started our own. Uh, from there, um, I noticed when I was a fitness competitor and I was traveling in the United States, I noticed that every, uh, you know, city that I went to, they always had a women's publication. Mm -hmm. So I live in Vancouver. Well, I live in White Rock, which is a smaller city outside of Vancouver. But in the lower mainland, 12 years ago, Fresh got started because there wasn't, a, there was, there was no Canadian women or sorry, Vancouver women's publication. Mm -hmm. And I, and I wanted to do my own thing as much as I had a partner. I wanted to do my own, my own thing. Uh, I, I, I just thought, well, he's doing this. How about I do this? And it, it just was an idea that mm -hmm. happened. And so f fresh, fresh had its conception in 2010, I believe. Right. That's correct. Yes. It was 2010 started off as a local, local magazine mm -hmm. um we were in you know a lot of fat uh like uh, fashion stores coffee stores we did a lot, mm -hmm. we sponsored a lot of events so you know we'd go to an event you know we sponsored 
Um, Ellen did generous for this event. We gave out, you know, 10,000 oh. copies there. We sponsored the Oprah Winfrey event. We probably gave out 10,000 copies mm -hmm. there. We had Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist in there. And, you know, we interviewed him when they came to town. So, yeah, it started in 2010, started as Vancouver. And then, you know, the back of my head, well, I want to go bigger now. I want, I want to go bigger. Mm -hmm. So we ended up distributing to uh, probably two years later to 3,000 spas and salons across Canada. Mm -hmm. And that was my distribution channel. You know, publication is, from what I understand, and please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a tough business. I mean, there's a lot of magazines out there, and I guess not a lot of them survive. I mean, can mm -hmm. you speak a little to more to sort of the, how you built up the magazine and some of the challenges you faced and how you got through those challenges? Absolutely. So, you know, the, what I looked at is what what are the magazines, serve, who are they servicing and who are they not servicing? I knew when I went into the Lower Mainland, just Vancouver, there was no other women's magazines. So that was kind of my niche right there. I knew that we could get the advertisers. Uh, I also knew not to compete and go into the Indigo books and the chapters in these big stores or book, book locations for magazines where you can buy magazines. I'm not going to be a small business person like me. I knew at the time I cannot compete mm. with a Chatelaine. I cannot compete with a Glamour. I cannot, they're huge publishing houses. That being said, I can find my own market. I can find my own space. And that's why I thought, well, if I distribute, there's no one else distributing to these spas and salons at the level that, that I can and service them. I, I saw the opening there. And I just knew don't 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 do something that someone else is already doing, mm. and do your do what you're doing differently. Find your niche. Do it. Do it different. Find why you're unique. Uh, I, I noticed that you know the Canadian magazines, um, even these these large publishing houses at the time, they weren't featuring uh, high mm. profile Canadian women, and I was like or even Canadian women. And a lot of these magazines, again, they were featuring, if they did have a woman on the cover, they had a young, you know, 20 to 25 year old model or an actress, right? Whereas I was like, let's take a look at these Canadian women mm. that are 40, 50, 60, 70. I had a 70, I think she was 75 year old woman on my cover. And let's really get to know these women and how, you know, how inspirational they are. And let's, and this goes into kind of where Pursuit goes into, but let's learn about their, let's celebrate their successes, mm. but let's also learn about, you know, the, the, the difficulties that they've been through and let's learn from them and, and that'll help us as well. So it, it was, it was like, yeah, go on. You know, no, your magazine is, 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 it's almost like this podcast, but it's on a different medium where you're sharing stories of people's successes, but also the tribulations and the trials they've had to learn from that. And as, as one of the things, I, I think this is, there was three pillars too. I think that was pursuit 365, but it's inspiring stories and inspiring stories. There's always an arc. It's not like success, 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 success because that's kind of boring, but it's understanding the, the tumultuous ride and the adversity that people face. And so I just see what you're doing as a, a much longer period than what this podcast does is to share those inspiring stories. I mean, so you spent time or from 2010 up to now building up the business and slowly you, you created a trend through the spas and through these well, wellness centers. And then the pandemic hit in 2020, I guess, March, 2020, I guess it landed there too. Like maybe it landed in Toronto and Oslo. How did that shake up the business? Well, you know, it, we were already struggling a little bit just mm. from the mere fact that let's face it. I mean, I've been in the publishing industry for 20, 25 years now. Um, well, the numbers of distribution numbers have changed it. The, the, the platforms have changed because we do have social media. So, you know, I know, you know, I've got some friends from the publishing industry that have, you know, that, that were big players, you know, and they've either gone bankrupt or they've, they've had to close, just close up shop because it just was not, it's just not working anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so there was already a little bit of a churn, but I, you know, I was in the middle of a divorce, uh, just before the pandemic happened, um, 
and it was what I, it, it was all that I, you know, the one, the, the larger business he had, he had taken because it was in his name and I was on my own. Mm. Uh, and I thought, well, what am I going to do here? I, I could go back to personal training. Um, you know, I, I'd always done publishing. I mean, there were some other things, which I, I can tell you what I got into, but my main, my main business was publishing. So I was like, well, what, what am I going to do here? Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make the mm. magazine work. So I just started working it really hard and it was, it was doing a turn. It was back on the up again. But then when the pandemic happened, my, now my distribution channel, which is the 3000 spas and salons, they're gone mm. for over two years. There's no more, there's no more distribution and there's no more advertisers because nobody's going into these places to buy anything. So the advertisers were either going out of business or shutting down. And obviously the, they were all closed. So Oh, what, what do I do now? And then on top of that, um, you know, I'm a mother of two kids mm-hmm. and I have them full time. I don't have them part time. I didn't leave my marriage with a, with, with a huge amount of money. As a matter of fact, I left with nothing. So, you know, what, what do you do? So you have to, then I was like, I had to just sit down and do I give up? Do I dig deep? Do I like, what do I do? And there was a lot of soul searching that went on. Mm. It didn't go on for very long because then I realized I actually just, who am I? You know who I am? I'm a warrior and nothing's going to knock me down. I might get down. I might fall and cry for a couple hours or a day, Mm. but I literally am one of those people that "Mm, you can knock me down, but I'm getting back up again. I will find a way. Life is a series of problems and solutions. Nothing's going to go easy. Mm. And I refuse to give up. Like refuse. Like it's not happening. <laughs> it's not an option. Burn the burn the ships, right? So it's not an option. If someone is struggling right now, a listener somewhere in the world who's listening to this podcast is struggling financially or with some sort of adversity that they feel overwhelming, what advice would you give them? Sort of nuts and bolts. How should they focus? How should they perceive something? What kind of angle or reframe should they take in order to overcome that and it, obviously it's not about positive thinking positive affirmations because i mean that's yeah. kind of superficial but what is something that really helped you shelly well i'm a firm believer in going back to the the exercise and and treating our bodies and minds with love respect and kindness that it is accept the situation, accept, just the accepts the acceptance of it all is like here I am. This is what I have to deal with. It's not good, mm. but if I love and respect myself, and I do the exercise, and I do the work, and I and I know that I might need to ask for help. Mm. And this is one thing that a lot of people don't like to do, and and I've noticed a lot of men don't like to ask for help, but. People don't like to ask for help. I was I was invited to be um, a part of a charity uh, in in the Lower Mainland here called the Fifty Women of Options. So they chose fifty women in Surrey, White Rock, Langley, and fifty women. And we each had they asked us each raise twenty five thousand dollars. And the first time around, I right away said yes. It's like it's my it's my home, it's my community, and it's for women fleeing. They were built. They were building a a building, um, raising funds to to house women fleeing violence, refugees, teenagers, and get them back on their feet again. So we did it, and and it was great. Uh, in between the two of those, I was having some family problems, and I was very upset about it. Mm-hmm. And it was and it was I was, I was crying actually. Mm-hmm. And I called my mother up and I said, "Mom, oh my gosh, like what am I going to do?" And she talked to me, and then she gave me this phone number. And this phone number, I phoned it and the lady, it was a counselor and I got on the phone and she talked to me for an hour. And you know what, Jason, I hung up that phone and I was doing amazing after this conversation, right? I hang up the phone and I look at it and it's the very charity that I'm a part of. I didn't know it was, I didn't know it was it. I was like, wow. Sorry, I've got shivers just thinking about this. And, and I knew right then and there that we as human beings, we have the power. I'm going to go, I'm going to answer your question here. This is all part of it. Sure. But we have the power as humans to help people at the same time we need help. Hmm. So they asked me back again, 
And just before I called that number, about a week or two before that, they had asked me to come back and raise money again for the second year. And I was up on the fence. You know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to try to get twenty five thousand dollars from people. So I was really on the fence with it. And then when I hung up that phone and I saw the number, I was like, you know what? I have the power to give help at the same time that I need help. I am definitely going to do this again. And, you know, I didn't quite raise the 25000 this time around. But going back to your question, what do you say? Love yourself. Love others. Remind yourself that you are worthy. Remind yourself that there's people out there that you can talk to that want to help you. And that if you just have one person that you can talk to and they help you rise just that one more day, it just is one more day. You just need to get through the one day. And guess what? You need to get through the one day. And I always find with that mindset, I always get through the day. I just need to get through today. You can actually hear the mind talk. You can hear the script that goes through your head. You can hear the narrative that you shifted you know, so, as simple as a statement as just one more day, you can reach out for help. Because the scripts, the narratives, the meanings we ascribe to situation, events, people, our lives, usually mount up to two or three sentences or a couple of questions, and then it plays on repeat, you know? And so what you've took, it was a very healthy reframe. As you said, I have the power to give help when I need help. I think uh, <laughs> it's such a simple statement, but in the simplicity, there's a deep and powerful elegance to it. Can I come back? You said, I talked to the counselor. My mom gave me the counselor's number, which just happened to be the one you're supporting, the the, the agency or the, the community that you're the supporting. Charity, yeah. Charity the thank you. The community group, yes. So what did you get from talking to that person on the other end, how did it help you through this, you know, just the voicing of your emotions and your thoughts or what was going through you at the time? Can you walk us through a little about that to the detail yeah, you'd like to? Yeah, a couple to? years ago, but I, I, I well, for me, you, we, we feel so alone and not heard, alone and unheard, and we feel that there is no opportunity for things to get better and I think when I got into this conversation with her I learned that I had to go back I am not the only mother or parent parent I'll say that is dealing with a teenager <laughs> and even though it's very difficult there's support groups and stuff and there's and, and there's offer there's things that my teenager can do to get help so um I felt that I was being heard by somebody who actually, even though they didn't know me, mm. they cared. They cared and they heard me and I was being heard. And someone was saying, Shelly, yes, you, what you're feeling is normal. Mm. What you're feeling is sadness. What you're feeling is frustration. And I can hear you and that's normal and that's okay. Mm. So, and tomorrow is a new day. Let's get through today. Let's get through today. I, I kind of like, I kind of look at life as like a golf game. <laughs> I love golf. I love golfing. But guess what? There's a new hole. There's two types. There's two types of golf players, right? There's the, the one golf player that gets out there and they get a bad hole and they're throwing their, they're throwing their clubs and they're angry and they're just, they're angry. And then they, then guess what happens? Their mindset's in such a poor place that they get to the next hole and it happens again. And then the next hole and it happens again. Me, I have a bad hole. I pick up, guess what? Got a new hole coming up. <laughs> it, it's, it's 18 games of golf within the 18 holes, right? Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what I'm hearing is that, okay, that hole went pretty well. That hole didn't go really well. But the next hole, that's a reset. I get to try again. Excellent. Right? Uh, no, it's, 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 it's a perfect uh, metaphor to kind of bridge what you're trying to communicate or what you are communicating, not trying to communicate, what you're communicating. And so what the counselor did in that sense, when you called that number just for 60 minutes, it showed you that the gods haven't picked out Shelly to make, you know, to, to make your life havoc, but that it's a normal situation and your reactions, your emotions and your thoughts around that 
reaction are completely normal. But the question is what you want to choose to do with those emotions and thoughts. At the same time, you felt cared, you felt being heard. There was a sense of psychological safety that someone truly was connecting to you. and They weren't spitting out solutions. They were truly just listening to you, allowing you to vent and to articulate and process thoughts and emotions. And in a sense, he or she said, tomorrow is another day, right? There is a tomorrow. Just handle this one and then get up and handle the next day. That sounds, you know, when people are on looking into the abyss and the edge, sometimes that is all that's needed to pull them back a little from what you said. And obviously that sets your head in the right direction. That gave you a, 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 a const- I don't want to say positive, but a constructive mindset to deal with your adversity and your, your situations. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it really, think about your friends, mm. think about your family members, you know, pick up the phone and call someone and just, mm. you know, I got my couple friends and just pick up the phone and I'm like, this is what's going on. And right here, you just getting, putting things into perspective and like, really, like you said, you know, whatever the gods, they're not out there to ruin Shelly's life. You know, they're not, no. they're not after me. I have to make those changes. Mm. I have to change my perspective. Mm. I have to look at the, look at all angles of it. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to admit, this is not good. Mm. This is not good. What's going on. Mm. This is really bad, but it's not going to be bad forever, but I can, I can find a way through because we have good days and bad days. And really those, you know, those, those good days are pretty darn good. Sometimes those bad days are pretty bad. And my father used to say, you know, he said this along the same lines, you know, you know, all storms end. And he used to say, just tell yourself this too shall pass right? Exactly. This too shall pass. You know, it's almost like, okay, just get through the day, get through the next day. And as the days rack up, things will change. Things will evolve. Nothing stays static. Even the worst things, you know, you know, day follows night and night follows day per se. And life is that kind of roller coaster. So I, I think it's quite profound what you're saying and how the counselor actually helped you to get your head back in the game where you said, you know what, I'm a, I'm a warrior. And it only took, I'm not saying it only took 60 minutes, but within that 60 minutes, maybe that was the catalyst that kind of lit your rockets to go. I'm not saying it was easy to climb out, but you yep. started to climb out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I just, guess what? I got through that day. You know, I got through mm-hmm. that day and, you know, I'm pretty much glass half full kind of girl all the time. Even in my worst times, I'm that person. It's life's pretty darn good, right? Like we yeah. don't know... We don't know how many times we get to, get to go around and do this, right? I mean, I think it sounds a little bit nuts maybe to some people, but I do think we come here many times. And mm. um, I just think that, yeah, one got through another day and it's really not that bad. You know, there's, there's, mm. there's so many people. We, you know, I live in a, I live in a beautiful country and with beautiful, multicultural, mm. beautiful people around me and we are free and, and, you know, we're, we're, I, I can walk down the street fair, you know, fairly mm. safely, uh, you know, a woman, um, you know, on my own, you know, raising girls and, you know, we, I can walk into a grocery store and buy what I want. And, you know, um, maybe my, you know, maybe I don't have $10 billion in my bank account, but I live in a pretty safe, awesome mm. country. You know, the world needs more so Canada. many opportunities. Oh, it does. Right. What, what, you know, uh, there's things that happen, but it's, Really, there's way worse going on in the world. Mm. There's way worse going on in, in, in other people's homes. You know, I, you know, it, that that is the thing. Is it's like let's really look about what's going, what's going on. Is that really a problem? Mm. Is that really a problem, or am I making it a problem? Shelley's experience during the pandemic taught her an important lesson that life is a series of problems and solutions. When her distribution channels were wiped out, she refused to give up and instead treat herself with love, respect, and kindness. In other words, she showed self-compassion. And by accepting the reality of the situation and asking for help, she was able to overcome the shock and move forward. 
This experience inspired her to create the book Pursuit 365, which aims to bring together 365 authors and share their stories of overcoming challenges. Shelley's goal with the book 365 is to build a community of support and encouragement, reminding us that we are worthy and that there are people out there who want to help us. And in the second part, Shelley talks about the origins of Pursuit 365, that its overall goal is the pursuit of meaningful work and the pursuit of an authentic life through the stories of 365 authors and their stories of adversity, challenge, and accomplishments. And so now, let's slip back into this dream with Shelley Lynn Hughes. For those audience members who don't know it, could you tell us a little more about Pursuit 365 and what the goal and purpose is? Yeah, definitely. So Pursuit 365 was born out of the COVID. It was born out of the fact that I couldn't do Fresh Magazine, the hard copy anymore. And it was born out of the fact that I was asked to speak at the United Nations for International Women's Day, representing Canadian women entrepreneurs alongside six other Canadian women. And women were coming from all over the world for this convention. Uh, so it didn't happen <clears throat> because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So now, I, you know, so I was so excited about it, right? You know, and then I was sat when the whole warrior out of me came out of me, and this is where I pivoted Fresh Magazine. And I was like, well, what do I need? What do I need? is likely what other women need or people need. Um, I've changed my business to be more of a, a human business as opposed to a women's business because mm. it used to be women's. But uh, I thought, well, what what do what do women need right now um, during this COVID? And, and I thought, well, if my business is struggling, other women's business is struggling. Mm. Um, they're not having the same finances come in. I also know that with COVID, a lot of people suffered just from... Um, emotionally, you know, spiritually, personally, they're struggling at home because, you know, we all know why. So I thought, well, what do I need as a business person? Okay, well, Fresh Magazine now cannot be a hard copy. I still need to bring people to my website. Well, how can I do that? And how can I, you know, well, I'm going to find, this is where I'm making up in my head this stuff, right? This is me just, mm. bleh. I'm going to find 365 women and I'm going to sell them a spot on my website and I'm going to add, I'm going to interview each one of them, you know, not video interview, but interview them and their company and feature them, their businesses with links back to their website. And that is going to support them because they're doing business from home as well. They're, they're going to need the digital component. So with that side of it, we sold them a spot and for fresh magazine. And with that, um, brought them some business as well. The other side of it, I thought, okay, that's, I'm, that's, I'm working with them. The other side of it is I'm going to, I'm going to support them emotionally, spiritually heal. I'm going to do a book with these same 365 women. I'm going to give them a spot in the book. Mm -hmm. And in the book, there's these 365 women are going to write 365 words of something uh, inspirational motivational, something beautiful that they went or, or, or not a tragedy, both something that they've mm -hmm. been through in their life that can help inspire other others. And it's going to be 365 words only. And I'm going to give them a photo of themselves. And so within, I'd say 12 weeks, um, we had our 365 women, we had our, you know, community. So it was like, okay, so now I've created a community of women supporting one another. I've created uh, you know, some web traffic to my website because each woman is now sharing this and I'm sharing it and mm -hmm. want to read these stories. Um, and, and I've created what I needed at the time. Like I said, my magazine, there was no more magazine anymore. I've created a little bit of money just to put food on my table, mm -hmm. you know, pay the bills for the year. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't a ridiculous amount of money. I only charged $365 per person. It was just enough mm -hmm. so that I could, build a community, but also feed my kids at the same time. And it sounds like, oh, well, you know, what was the big deal of that? Well, it turned out to be, you know, an Amazon bestseller. Mm -hmm. um, we had an amazing, we have, a, we have an amazing community. That's how it all started. It's grown from there. Um, and, you know, we've got our directories now. We've got our magazine now. We've got our, we've got a, and we do interviews 
not quite like this. It's not a podcast like this, but we do our interviews as well, which is called Talk Wednesdays. And we've really built a foundation of a beautiful supportive community that we help each other rise up, whether it be in personal life or business life. So that was the first year of pursuit. Mm. And it was wonderful. Uh, second year came and people said to me, well, you got to do it again. Oh, it's so great, Shelly. And then, then now I know I've got my community, right? Yeah. Shelly, what you're doing is amazing. It's so fantastic. We got national coverage in Canada. I was like, well, we can do it again, but I don't want to do it just women. Mm. I think we need to support men as well and non-binary. I don't want to just do a, a women's book again. I know we are, our communities and our families are only as strong as the people involved in it. And if, if we have great supportive men in our life, mm. oh, all the better. Supportive, respect. That's what I want. That's what mm. that's what we want. So, so we did it again. Um, and and then the other thing I really wanted to do with the second book, the first book was about thirty percent. It was all women, but maybe thirty percent from the BIPOC community. I wanted to make sure this time around it was closer to the fifty percent mark. So we did that. So we had men, women, non-binary, brought up the BIPOC communities, you know, uh, uh, exposure as well. And this time now it's selling in seven countries and we're in you know online at walmart and target and and we're just building this ah it's just this loving community support of of one another and now we're working on our third book actually third fourth and fifth <laughs> talk about lining them up that sounds good oh, yeah. because there's, you, you talk about you know that pursuit 365 is about meaningful work and creating an authentic life and there's when I was doing some research, there was three pillars. You said it's to share inspiring stories, to learn from that, to curate value added resources and to cultivate a dedicated um, community. I, I would just like to dive into the second one, the curated value added resources. What do you mean by that? Could you expand on that? Well, the added resources is we've now got our, um, well, there's two sides of it. There's the personal side of it and the business, the way we support, mm. uh, people. So we've got people that are part of our community that have, you know, jobs that just, you know, you know, jobs like uh, careers. Um, they don't, they're not entrepreneurs, mm. um, but they like getting the different articles we have. They, they want to write articles. They, they want to, um, you know, maybe learn about other people's products. So what we try to do is we try to support people personally and professionally. Professionally, we do a lot of uh, social media um, stories about their companies. Um, so the curated is, you know, the stories both on personal levels and business levels, depending on what our community, what that specific person is looking for. Mm. Uh, yeah, so th that's it. Okay. Where, where, where do you see the community growing? You know, Pursuit 365 started as one book, then as the second book, which included men and women. Now it's sold in seven countries. I mean, where do you see it going? Where do you see this community progressing towards? So this, our third book we're working on. Uh, so the first book was all at the outside was white and all the women's names are on the front and the back of the cover. It's presented by me, but the authors are the 365 authors that are involved. The second book was black, uh, black outside white writing. Our third book we're working on right now is 365 uh, entrepreneurs from North America telling mm -hmm. 365 stories of business advice or business stories sharing. And the first few books were primarily Canadians. Now our North American book, we've got people from Hawaii, uh, Mexico, Colorado, Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. Las Vegas, Toronto, you know, Saskatchewan. So it's our North American entrepreneur book. After this book, our United States book that we're working on right now, we're actually doing it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. We're doing it on a, on a, on a, there's a bit of a criteria of voting and, and the, the theme of the United States book, it's still going to be businesses, but it's it, the theme of it is the power of humanity in business. And we want to learn, you can vote, you can vote for people, you can vote for yourself. There's, there's five judges. Um, there's, write up that they have to do after they're nominated or they nominate themselves. And there's a people's choice as well. Now that doesn't mean if someone's got, you know, uh, 50 K social media followers and they get all the 50,000 votes on their page that they're going to win. We also want to know what they're doing mm -hmm. to give back what they're doing to the, for the world. 
So that's the United States one. And then we actually are now doing one in India as well. Um, the India one's going to be a little bit different as well, but that one, that one's in the very beginning stages. Um, but yeah, the India one as well. So, uh, then from there we'll be doing events. So we're breaking it down to, um, an event in Canada and, uh, the 50 States will each have their own book. So, uh, pursue 365 California. Wow. And that's the next step from there. And we'll be doing events in each one of those um, locations and with speakers and whatnot. Well, that's incredible. You know, one thing is North America, that's a national expansion, but to jump across the ocean towards India, that's, that's, that's a, that's definitely a jump for the, for your uh, community. I was definitely just, is. yeah, yes. I was wondering why, why India was it, what, what inspired you to reach out towards the, the Indian continent? You know what? Uh, I've had a few authors that have been involved with us for a few years now. And they were like, we want to take this to India. And I'm like, what? They're like, yes, we want to take this to India. And go back to the power of the ask, people. Like the power of the ask is so strong and the power of the idea to just work through it. So, yeah, so we we they asked me. We negotiated a deal where I'm still a partner in it. But, you know, um, and then we... Yeah, it's happening. So we, had this, uh, we actually just had two other requests for, believe it or not, Africa and Poland. Okay, the whole continent of Africa and then Poland. <laughs> I know. I was oh. like, what? But I think what's different between us and a lot of these communities that are out there, they're generally business-based, mm. self-care, self-love, and then very niche market. I think with us, it's a little bit different because we are trying to just work with in each individual person some mm-hmm. somewhere or another and um, help them rise personally and professionally. I mean, Jason, how many people do we know? How many people do we know? I know a lot huh, of people that have incredibly mm. successful companies, but they're personal life is not incredibly successful. It's very Mm. sad and trying and Mm. and difficult. On the other side of it, how many incredible people do we know? Our Mm. families are just so nice, but, and they're they're doing so well in their community. They're doing this, but they're struggling financially. I, I want to find a way to help everyone rise so that the communities and their home life and, and is strong, but they're also able to take care of their families. And and success to me is Mm. not worth $500 million. That's not success to me. Success to me is how happy we are. And and, and can we, and how happy can we be Mm. if we can't, if we're struggling to make ends meet constantly? That's not happy. Mm. That's so stressful. And how happy can we be if we have $500 million in our bank account? Don't have time to use it. We've got no one to love us. Mm. Mm-hmm. Are we not loving anyone and we're not loving ourselves? Yeah. So that's what I, I'm trying and I don't even know how I'm doing it, but that's what I'm really trying to do is, is bridge those two things together and support one another and to rise. Is ba- that's basically it. Well, I, I think it comes back to the two tenets that we spoke about what Pursuit 365 is about. It's to the pursuit of meaningful work and the pursuit of an authentic life. And then we can throw 365 there, you know, in all different regards, right? So I mean, I for me, it's it's I I, I think I think it's something I would love to promote because it's it's an idea. It's like when you can see. I, I think it comes back to what you went through. You went through your tribulations and your trials, and you you were in you were maybe in a dark mindset for a while. You talked to a counselor. He or she helped you to articulate and to process your emotions and thoughts. But Mm -hmm. one of the major things he or she said to you is that, you know what, this is completely normal. This is what you're going through. You're not the only one. The gods have not picked out Shelly to ruin her life. This happens to a lot of people. And it's usually just due to circumstance. You know, no one sees these variables. But when someone reads a story from one of your books in the last three years, right, whether it's the States or Canada, eventually India or Poland, what have you, Mm -hmm. To read 365 words, it could be just one sentence in one story that pulls someone back from the abyss, that gives them hope, that that just lights their fire. And as you said in one of your senses, Shelly, which really hit me, just another day. As my dad used to say, this too shall pass. You know, all storms end. 
regardless of how, but each of those sentences kind of communicates pretty much the same thing. They're just slightly different permutations, but I Mm -hmm. think it's just that it's not about positive thinking. It's not about affirmations, but it's about constructive thinking. Cause sometimes we're in a, a hard situation and any way you cut it, it's a hard situation. So sometimes having that constructive mindset can pull us through it, right? At least that's my interpretation of this. And I think reading a book with 365 stories of different people's successes and how they got there and all the struggles they've had to deal with, it just shows you everybody gets it as part of the human condition. It's part of being, like you said, a human. It's just part of life. It's not they're not out to get you and I. <laughs> and if and if you've got people around, people around you, not mm-hmm. the gods that are out to get you, you need to remove those people from your life. Yeah. If you're, if you're you, you have to remove those, you know, speaking of that, like, and, and I'm not going to dog my ex-husband, but we, mm-hmm. like our dear friend, Ann Kaplan, you know, mm-hmm. whom we both love. Um, when she found out about my divorce, to go on perspective here, no word of a lie. She she was one of the first people I told about what was going on. And it mm. wasn't, it, it, yeah. She found out at, it was seven o'clock my time, or yeah. six or seven a.m. And she was in Toronto. And I texted her and I said, Oh my God, you know, gave her a little text. She literally picked up that phone and said to me, because she she knows me quite well. She picked up the phone and I said, Oh my gosh, Anne, can you believe this? And she says, Well, Shelly, congratulations. What? an extraordinary opportunity for you. What a total re- reframe. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and I hate to say it because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was married for 24 years and, and there was a lot yeah. of good and bad that went with your marriage. Yeah, yeah. Some, things, some things just come to an end. Sometimes mm. the journey and you're not supposed to be with that person forever. So when Anne said that and, and, and full disclosure, I have become happier, healthier, all around a better human being Mm -hmm. since that specific day and said that to me. And a lot of people, they say, well, you know, it's a divorce. It's bad. I'm like, it is. But if it's done properly, Mm -hmm. there's still a lot of kindness, love and respect that that can go from a breakdown of a of whether it's being a business or a marriage. I mean, mm-hmm. I've had ex-business partners. I've got one specifically um, in Vancouver here. We're in a skincare line together. And her and I are still friends. We we decided to break it off. And mm. you can still do things positively. You've just got to have the right mindset. Things change. I mean, things evolve. I mean, it, it's just the nature. Fall in love, you fall out of love. Relationships. But it's <laughs> as you said, it's it's to accept the situation, look at the facts. And hopefully, if if done correctly, you can salvage something from that Right. And hopefully, you know, you stay friends or you stay, you stay connected, but at a different level and a different, uh, different way. It's just different. Yeah. Yeah. And different's okay. Cause different can be better for both parties. Different's okay. The journey. I mean, the journey, I think so many people just, they don't, they don't look at it as like, oh, there's like a bad, 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 bad. Right bad it's all bad it's all you know oh why am i going through this well you're going through this because it's part of the journey and that's Mm. you're supposed to go through this Mm. i appreciate all the stories you've shared and such and i'm also very appreciative of your time i was wondering is there any last advice you'd like to share for someone who may be struggling with a business a relationship and just in a hard time you can manifest your future you can make it better Mm. don't doubt yourself because you're worthy. That's all I can say. I don't care who's listening to this right now. You're worthy and you're valuable Mm. and you can manifest your future. You can make it happen, but only you can do it. Mm. And I get help from people and get help, but you have to do it. You have to do the work and it's work. So that's all, that's all I think it is. It's like, I think it's that self-compassion, you know, we, we turn self-compassion uh, actually onto everyone else. But a lot of the times when it comes to ourselves, we turn it off and we hit ourselves with negative thoughts, self-criticism, doubt, imposter syndrome, however it shows up. But what you're saying is very simple, but again, there's a, there's, there's a deep elegance and a, a profound nature to that is to, you know, look at a situation you may succeed or you may learn. Those are the only two options. 
And if you learn how do you adapt, how you evolve, how can you improve the next step forward one day at a time? One day at a time. And Jason, you know what? We are, I, I'm going to speak for myself here. I am a hugely flawed human being. I have a lot of flaws. I'm okay with that because I'm a pretty <laughs> awesome human as well. There's a lot. And I think when we admit those, admit, look at yourself, recognize that, yes, you are not perfect. Recognize that. Admit your flaws, but also t- really, really love yourself and say, you know what, that it is okay because mm. no one else I know around here is perfect either. So, yeah, just really get real. It's just about getting real. And and real is not going into uh, – Real is, is looking at your situation and, and just recognizing where you're at and recognizing that you have the ability. You have the ability, and if you ask for help, you can get there. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Thanks, Shelly. I really appreciate your time. I hope uh, maybe we can talk at the sometime in 2024 when your new Pursuit 365, and maybe we can explore some of those stories on an episode. Oh, that would be lots of fun. And we should have you in the next book. You and I should talk about that. I'm all there. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> Thanks, I was, I'd love to have you. And and thank you for having me on your program. I, I'm honored. And you're just, the energy is beautiful. I love it. Thank you. Well, folks, that was the brilliant and inspiring Shelly Lynn Hughes. Shelly, thanks so much for spending some time with me today on the podcast. I learned a lot from our conversation, but one thing that really, really stood out to me was the self-compassion you have for yourself. You know, when you talked about having kindness and respect and the belief in yourself and that all of us can pick that up and that we can move forward, but without that self-compassion, What is it replaced with? It's replaced with self-flagellation, with self-doubt and self-critical thoughts. And any of those three never help us. And so if we can adopt what Shelley talks about, self-compassion, well, that's a huge and significant element to this mindset that we call resilience. So thanks again, Shelley. I really appreciate your time and, and such a great conversation. Folks, if any of you are interested in contacting Shelley or picking up the book, Pursuit 365, I will leave all the contact information and links in the show notes. Well, here we are again, folks, at the end of another episode. That went fast. And another week, another week's wrapped up. So we will continue this conversation next Monday. I will see you next week with a new story, with a new guest, and with fresh inspiration. So thanks again for showing up. Until next time, until next week, keep well, keep strong, and we'll speak soon. 